Thank you for your ah. introduction and the vision. And then this is one of my the bucket list the city to travel in the world is uh, Saint Petersburg. Actually, this is my first trip to here, and I'm so excited. And then finally, I can make it to solve my one of my bucket list to travel. Would you please turn on my? Yeah, and my title is uh, the Ewing sarcoma. What is new in molecular aspect? And then before I to talk, we have to know that what is old. This is all, and then this is all. Actually, Actually we, we took, took this, this picture in 1991, 1991 when we were in Mayo Clinic. Here, you, you know, recognize one people, people. And, and she is one of my the best, best friend and old friend. And we've been known each other more than the 30 years, probably more than my wife did. <laughs> And at that time, I don't have any gray hair, and my hair is all black, and currently my is a totally different. And Ewing sarcoma is one of the malignant, the, the small round septuma in bone, and the first most common malignancy of the bone. And 80% occur in the less than 20 years old, and five years survival rate is 50%, despite uh, we do that all kinds of multi-modal therapeutic uh, approaches. And this doctor is uh, James Ewing. Actually, he was born in 1866 and passed away in 1943. And he's the one of the, the founding members of the Memorial Sloan Catering Cancer Center. And he had a little handicap on his uh, foot and then, and his uh, favorite hobby is boxing. Yes. And then this is a typical Ewing sarcoma that radiographically we can see the very well illustrated onion skin appearance. And then this is uh, actually onion skin. And this boy is a seven years old boy. We just discussed very well the, about the how to reconstruct the chest surgery. And then this boy had uh, several ribs involved. And then we resected. And this is a typical gross picture of the Ewing sarcoma. You can easily recognize a huge extraosseous mass formation in the cut surface fish flesh appearance. This is a typical Ewing sarcoma gross morphology. And then cytologically, usually it forms the, the lobular fashion, or sometimes it is a, the code-like arrangement. And then cytologically, usually the cells are pretty uniform, and then the chromatin pattern is quite fine chromatin patterns. And then CD99 is a product of MIG2 gene, and then it is a kind of the cell adhesion molecule. And it is quite the, the sensitivity to diagnosis of the Ewing sarcoma is a beautifully illustrated the membrane stain, not the cytoplasmic staining. However, it lacked the, the specificities. And then uh, it is the, the really the important study, the 1122 chromosome translocation was revealed by 1983 by the Dr. Orius. And then followed by the EWSR of fly one gene fusion protein was discovered by Lela de la Tour from the French group. You know EGR? Is there any the audience came from the Germany? No. Is it so I'm I'm pretty safe to what I'm going to the EGR is actually exhausted gas reconstruction circulation. If this is blocked, what happened to our car? This is happened. This is one of the famous B whatever the car from G country. And <laughs> this is quite often happened there. A lot of the EGR in Ewing circle. It's the same exhaust gas recirculation. No, this is all the gross response one. 
in Ewing Sakuma, the pathogenesis is, is one of the, the famous one is IGF-1 pathway. So IGF-1 pathway is a very, very important in, in controlling Ewing Sakuma signaling pathways. So we know, we try to know that the EGF-1 protein pathway in Ewing Sakuma families. There is EGF R1 gene is located in chromosome 5Q, and then there are several the promoters to activate it, the EGL1 gene. And then this is the EBS is also one of the, the important the promoters. In 1997, Dr. Watson already described that EWS fly one gene is bind to EBS and then it can stimulate the Ewing Sakuma pathways. This is a transcription factor binding site with EGF on the promoters. There are several ones to bind this pathway. And finally, this EWS fly one bind this EGR1 promoter site. And then yeah, the, the, if this the EGR1 bind to this pathway, especially GHG rich the promoter elements. And then you can control multiple genes such as IGF-1 and TJ beta and so on. And then it, this is the IGF-1 R uh, gene and then EGR-1 gene is bind this way. And then this is the EGF EWS gene and this is a fly one gene. And then this is a binding protein, the fusion protein and then this is EGR1 gene is bind to this side. So IGF1R is a key growth factor for Ewing sarcoma the survival. So IGF1 bind to IGF1 receptor through downstream, such as the RAS tor activity, and then it followed by the cell activation is a, the activated and the cell survival and proliferation and so on processes activated. So in Ewing sarcoma, the fusion protein, EWS fly one gene is a very important. It's more than 85% is uh, found in the Ewing sarcoma family. This fusion protein provided the oncogenic stimuli that transformed primary cells and constituting initial event of Ewing sarcoma, the pathogenesis. Before that, we tried to see that the genus protein, actually genus is a famous for the, the fibrous dysplasia. Mm -hmm. And then genus is a stimulated G alpha subunit and then cyclic AMP crab. And then it binds to this promoter site of EGR1 gene. And then probably this activation of this signal pathway is activated. So we try to see that the genus, the gene status in Ewing sarcoma, and we did the immunostaining, and this is a high signal pathway, the intensity. So Ewing sarcoma family, we try to see that the high GS alpha expression is a 65%, and low GS alpha is a 34%. So we also did the, the mutation analysis of the exon 8 and 9 of genus gene. However, we could not find any mutation at all. And then what about the, the methylation status? So hypermethylated group and hypermethylated group closely correlate with the GS alpha the expression. Usually high expression group had a high, uh, usually hypermethylated group. And then also the patient with the survival group had it, uh, some of the, the statistically correlated but not significant correlation with the GS alpha expression. So in our previous study, no mutation was found in genus location and methylation state is correlated with GS alpha the expression. And then low GS alpha expression means that high permethylated status and then showing poor prognosis in Ewing sarcoma families. So this is our the, uh, speculated uh, the signal pathway. So 
EGR1 gene is bind to this pathway. And then this IGF1 receptor, IGF1 F1 receptor is activated and then followed by this pathway is activated. Work. And then again, ES of the fly one gene. And it's also the autocrine and procrine activate, activated all the, the pathway signals. And then if this is a, our speculated EGL1 the circuit, and then after the IGF-1 alpha is uh, activated, this following by PI3 kinase pathway, the NACT pathway is activated, and then followed by TGF beta, wind, and SHS signal is uh, activated. And the, it means all the normal cells transformed in the Ewing sarcoma cells. So we try to see that the, what's going on in the Ewing sarcoma cells if we block this pathway in Ewing sarcoma. So in the commercially, it, it is now available the SI RNA, which means it, this SI RNA is a selective block EGR1 the pathway. So we uh, commercially buy this SI RNA and then transfect it to the three different the Ewing sarcoma cell lines. So and then we try to see the, the northern blotting and western blotting and DNA expression, whatever we try to see that. And then we try to see that the protein expression of the EGR1 and IGF1 receptor and EWSF1 gene status. So after the we transfected, we try to see the cell viability. I'll say if if we transfected something into the cell, if the cell viability is a change, we cannot do the, the experiment anymore. So there is a no uh, changes in the cell viability. And the cell invasion of say we also did. After we transfected the EGR1 gene, there is a not significant the cell invasion of say. And then this is a EGL1 gene, the mRNA expression after the transfection of EGL siRNA. After transfected in the bottom, we can see the, the three different cell lines. And then this is a markedly decreased mRNA expression of the EGL1 gene. Also after the transfection of the EGL1 siRNA, here is the mRNA expression of the EWS fly one gene is also decreased. So this is a IGF1R expression of mRNA also markedly decreased. So we know that after siRNA the transfected to the cell, these three the genes, the signal is mRNA expression is markedly decreased. And the followed by, we try to see that the Western blotting of this the, after the SIRA transfection. You can see that the, here is the EGL1 gene and IGF1 receptor and EWS fly one gene is a control fibroblast. However, in the Ewing sarcoma, one of the cell line is after the transfection, these are the, the protein level is actually decreased. And this is the second cell line, and this is the third cell line. So in our study, EGL1 gene is an enhanced of EWS fly one gene. So this is a carefully we can speculate it. That if we block this EGL1 the gene expression, and then we can use to treat Ewing sarcoma in the future in personalized medicine. So this, this is our next step to do that, the, some of the validation or paraffin block, copy number variation or some of the, we do not know still the, some of the epigenetic study. Epigenetic means that, that there is no DNA sequence changes and then it can change the genetic the transformation. So we try to see that the epigenetic changes and then the next step is a xenograft of the Ewing sarcoma cells in the, the noodle mouse and then what's going on happen. That is our next step. Thank you for your attention.